it's Daphne. Welcome back to another New York City reading vlog. In today's vlog, I have a very specific book I am planning to read, and that is Paul Takes the Form of a Mortal Girl. This is my IRL book club pick with my friends here in my apartment building. This is a gender fluid story about a young man named Paul who in 1993 tends the only gay club in his university town, but he has a secret. He is a shapeshifter and he's able to transform his body and his gender into that of a woman. So I'm very intrigued by this and I want to give it my full, full best effort and annotate this. I don't really annotate that much or often. I don't have that much experience in it. So I want to try it out so that way when I go back to my book club, I can have like a really fun, insightful discussion on this story. In addition to reading that, I want to pick up Kennedy Ryan's The Kingmaker book. This is like a romantic, I'm sure heart-wrenching duet. I'm pretty sure it's a duet. And I really want to read it because Taya recently read it and really enjoyed it. And I have dinner plans with her coming up. So I don't remember what city she's based out of. I feel like it's Philly, but I'm not 100% sure. But she's coming up to New York for an event at The Strand. And she hit me up on Instagram. I was like, hey, I know you live in New York. Do you want to meet up? And I was like, yeah, for sure. That sounds awesome. So we're going to grab dinner. And it'd be really nice to be caught up on one of the books she's been raving about. Um, so that's my game plan. In addition, like my YouTube networking game right now is well succeeding my IT consultant job networking. <laughs> Networking for that has been really different, like challenging, but like I could do it. But with the YouTube stuff and Instagram stuff, it's way more fun. So in that regard, I have a live show I'm going to be attending with Meredith and Eliza and a bunch of other creators. I'm going to link all these YouTubers that I've mentioned down in the description. So Taya and Meredith and Eliza and all the other girls and people that will be on the live show. Um, in my description. So I have that plan for tomorrow night. It's my first live show and I'm a little nervous about it, but I'm excited to like actually be able to have a conversation with some of my friends besides like DMing. And yeah, it's, I'm just like really excited. <laughs> and then just plans I have lifestyle wise, I have my final bridal dress fitting tomorrow in the morning. So I'm gonna meet up with my mom. She's gonna do that with me and we'll probably grab some lunch. And then the live show, like I said, and then Sunday, me and Chase are gonna go to brunch. We're gonna go back to this place called Ladybird. It's this vegan spot that is very vibey. So I'm excited to take you along. You'll see, stay tuned. And then I have the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is happening. So I'm gonna go hang out with my friend Allie and like, the girls and people I know through college and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna drag Ina along with me <laughs> because I wanna integrate my two friend groups more and more. So we'll see if she's up for that. So I will bring you along for that as well. And we're rooting for the Chiefs apparently, okay? I don't know about the people at the party with who they're rooting for because it's like the Chiefs and the Eagles, right? Let me check that because that would be embarrassing. Yeah, the Chiefs and the Eagles. Look at me, it, it is the Chiefs and the Eagles. I know a little something something. Not really, I don't care about football on the regular, but some of my girlfriends, they really, really care. But I know I'm rooting for the Chiefs because I have loyalty to my family and my dad wants the Chiefs to win. Anyway, this clip has been really long. Um, oh, let me tell you what Kennedy Ryan's book is about. Um, I really don't know what it's about. <laughs> And I don't want to look it up. I have a suspicion because I went to Kennedy Ryan's before I let go signing event a couple months ago and she was talking about her backlist and maybe this Kingmaker one is the story about like an indigenous woman and like a rich guy, a company guy and like protesting and she like did a lot of research on this topic. I don't know if that's true. The synopsis is quite big and I literally know nothing. So I kind of want to keep it that way. Let's just jump in and find out. I could be completely wrong, but I will update you when I find out. I'm not sure how long this vlog is going to last, but I'm going to complete these two books before I leave you. 
Bye for now. All right, me and Chase are ready to go. So, I'm wearing this top that I bought forever ago but never wore. It's like one of those risky, no bra, whatever shirts. <laughs> Looks cute. Hopefully I don't expose myself. And then Chase is rocking his new trench. Look at that, Ooh, luxury, luxury. <laughs> so we're going to dinner. I made a reservation. We are definitely running late. We're gonna run out right now. It's one of our favorite spots. I'll tell you more later or I'll show you whatever, whatever. It's vegan. Korean. Is it Korean? I always do that. It's Korean? Yeah. And then maybe we'll go to New York Fashion Week? I don't know. We're not sure. Okay, bye. Celebrity. <laughs> Yo, pop that collar. Work it. Work it. Damn, look at him go. Look at him go. <laughs> okay, now you got some shots of me. Good morning, it is Saturday morning. I am running out the door for my bridal fitting, my final one, and I'm gonna just bring you along for like a sneak peek. I'm gonna meet up with my mom, we'll probably grab some lunch after, and then we'll just see where the day goes. Um, I did start, Paul takes the form of a mortal girl. I'm like 20 so pages in, and I'm really, really loving it so far. I've been annotating it up. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, so we've been annotating it and it's been really, really fun to annotate. I kind of want to bring it with me on the train and stuff, but it's just not practical to like bring all my markers and try to annotate because I'll want to annotate more stuff. <laughs> so I'm just going to bring my Kindle and start that Kennedy Ryan book. So I got to go. Let's head out the door. Also, this is my outfit of the day. I don't have any makeup on. I've got this cute cropped sweater, baggy jeans, and my cute flat loafers that Chase got me for Christmas. Okay, bye for real. <laughs> Good morning, it is Sunday, and I had my live show yesterday with Meredith and some of the other people in the show. It was really cool to be able to like talk to the people I've messaged online for a while these days, especially with like Eliza, because we talk 
like every other day. So it was really cool to be able to like go back and forth in a conversation on like FaceTime versus just in DMs. So I had a really great time. We were on the live for like three hours and it was all trivia. I kind of thought maybe we'd do sprints, but I had a great time like just doing trivia stuff. Meredith came up with some really fun games. I've added the live show to one of my playlists. You can check it out if you want to just like have it on in the background, cozy time. Um, we played some fun games like you had to finish the sentence on one of the books she put up. So like she'd block out a word, you'd have to guess the author, you'd have to match up the tropes and things like that. It was just like really creative and a fun time. So I'm really glad I put myself out there and went. Reading update wise, on my way to my bridal fitting yesterday, I started the Kennedy Ryan book, The Kingmaker, and I was right. My guess on what it was about was correct. So this is about an indigenous reservation and how this oil company is trying to lay this like pipeline through their sacred ground and it could potentially contaminate their contaminate their water system so they're protesting it and all this stuff and it's that story so our heroine uh at this point where i'm at i'm like still really early she's like 17 she's a protester she's like leading these rallies um her mother did that kind of thing when she was growing up and her mother has disappeared apparently that's a thing where like indigenous women just go missing and nobody seems to care like the government doesn't seem to care they're not doing anything to help these women so i'm interested to see like more of that plot line and like how this is happening in real life and things like that and learn more because i personally don't know and i want to be more aware of what's going on and then our hero is the son of the oil company guy and he's more of like an environmentalist and stuff so he's against it he's like in grad school or something so he's there's a bit of an age gap not that much and we'll see like where the timetables take us because i'm still really early intrigue so far still really early i'll update you more later and i've also been reading more of paul takes the form of a mortal girl i have been having a really fun time annotating it as you can see and i have more context on what's going on so paul can transform his body in many ways so like it's not like he's a like a werewolf shifter where it's like okay this is one form and then when you shift you're in another form right just like one or the other whole forms he can like minutely change little things about himself so like he can make himself like a little bit taller he can make himself a little bit like more muscly he can make himself more feminine he can change his genitalia things like that um he can make himself hairier he can make himself softer you know what i mean and it's really interesting i am a little unclear if the story is told chronologically because at first like in the first couple pages i thought his friend jane like knew that he can do this because he comes into the bar and he's transformed into a woman as far as i understood how the story was going and he's like oh i'm polly and she's like oh hi paul like i know it's you you know but then later like it seems like she doesn't know and he's like oh should i tell her so i'm a little confused if it's told chronologically or not um the writing style is really like quick pace so i'm enjoying that as well and it's like little snippets of like what he's doing da, 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 da. paul is also very like hyper sexual like he's always just looking for the next interesting person he likes to play this game where he's like in an elevator or like in a in a small room or something and he has to like pick a person like if it was the end of the world like who would he fall in love with but really he means like who would he want to sleep with and i mean it says it in the text like he doesn't really mean love <laughs> um so that's just kind of his mindset. Like he's just always on the hunt. And there was this really interesting line too that I'll read to you. It goes, he has never given anyone the pleasure of knowing they were hunted by him. Paul is the game. Paul hunts only hunters. He hunts to be hunted. And I just thought that was really, really interesting. And it reminded me of one of my girlfriends back in college because she used to have this idea like where she didn't want to be the pursuer. She always wanted the guy to make the first move but like at the same time she's playing the game too you know so she's hunting hunters <laughs> or she was i mean not anymore but um yeah i just thought that was really interesting and i'm intrigued to learn more i'm very intrigued about the whole like magical aspect of this and it is saying a lot on like gender and stuff like that and gender norms and like queerness and the queer community 
and he went on a rant for a while about music and like how rock bands do covers and like if a woman does a cover of a man's song and like what does that mean but like there's just a lot of like rock star names that i don't know so it was a little over my head <laughs> for a lot of it um but maybe if you're like really into rock music you'd appreciate those sections more um, but yeah i'm still really early on i'm not even a quarter of the way through and i'll update you later on more when i have more information <laughs> but right now chase and i are running out to get some brunch we don't have a reservation but we're just gonna walk in and hopefully they'll be able to sit us it's a very cute vibey place uh it's called ladybird and yeah i hope we can get in because i've been looking forward to their food for like over a week <laughs> so let's head out and look at the cat. Eloise is with us. <laughs> She's watching us. Hey, it's another day and I haven't updated you in a while, but I have done a lot of reading, which I'm gonna update you on in a second, but I've also been doing a lot of living. So on Saturday, I had my bridal shower. I didn't vlog any of it because I was like really in the moment, but I'm gonna put up probably the stories and maybe some clip, like the one clip I took on my camera for you to watch as I update you. So my mom and her best friend really helped like create this event for me which i was so thankful for we had it down at my parents house and they've recently renovated so the space is like great for hosting it's very open and bright and fresh and modern now and i was really really so appreciative of all the women that came out to celebrate with me i have a little bit of an insecurity when it comes to like people like caring enough about me to like go above and beyond and like attending my bridal shower and like driving like an hour away to you know be there for me and be happy for me and excited for me um really really meant a lot so my heart was so full and i could just and i just couldn't stop smiling the whole day um and i really didn't want to vlog i just really wanted to be like in the moment with my friends and not like shove a camera in their face <laughs> even though um a bunch of them know that i like do this like vlog and like make youtube videos and stuff but like, I don't want to be rude. And also, I just wanted to live. I had a really great time. We did some fun games. We had some fun gifts. And we did, like, bouquet creation and stuff. Like, my mom had, like, build your own bouquet setups with all these beautiful flowers. And that seemed to be a great hit. So, oh, yeah. I'm very excited. I'm literally getting married in, like, 10 days, which is shocking. I feel like everything is pretty much wrapped up. And honestly, like, I'm so excited to just, like, 
party and dance and have a good time. There's a little bit of pressure because I still gotta write my vows and I have two choreographed dances. I have my first dance choreographed with Chase and then when I was home, I stayed a couple extra days and I choreographed a dance with my dad. So now I have two dances to remember and I am not like a professional dancer. <laughs> like I have enthusiasm and like I'm decently good in my own opinion. Um, and so I've been told occasionally. <laughs> but just remembering the dance is kind of hard. Um, so I have to practice that and pray I don't forget. Um, what else? Uh, okay, and then this is like a really long clip already. And then reading update wise, I have been powering through the latter third of this book because I didn't realize our book club meeting is today. <laughs> I kind of thought I had a couple more days to finish it, um, but I don't. But yeah, then I realized I have to like really finish this ASAP if I'm gonna get to the end by the time we meet up. Um, so what I have learned in this story is it's very much a character focused story about this person, Paul. He uses he, him pronouns, but he has the power to transform his body. So he still kind of like looks like himself for the most part. He can't like really change race or things like that, like too extreme or like into other animals or something. But yeah, it's really like his story, his sexuality, him like falling in love and becoming, and getting heartbroken, just kind of being lost. Like he's so heartbreakingly lost at times that like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm at a loss for how to like, feel like he's gonna get his life on track. I don't know because he's just very, whimsical like he just changed his whole life for this person that he fell in love with and then things happened and he's just like wandering around isn't finishing school it's just like literally just sleeping around he's he's just sleeping around with like randos he meets in the park and it's you know at first in the beginning it's like him feeling empowered like oh yeah i'm so hot i'm the hunter that likes to be hunted, whatever. They don't even know that I'm making them want to pursue me, all this stuff. And he feels really empowered in that. But as you get further along, he's kind of lost that confidence and he's getting into like a little bit of alcohol abuse in my opinion and just like hooking up to hook up. But I don't, like he doesn't feel like good about those things. He's like, oh, maybe I could be persuaded. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of sad. Like I'm curious to see how he's gonna like grow in these last 50 pages that I have. Sometimes there's also like a lot of characters in here that I'm like, wait, am I supposed to know who that person is? <laughs> Cause I kind of just jump in suddenly. And there are also a lot of like origin stories for how he became the way he is with this like magic and power. But it all just seems like made up. Like, I don't know. Like there's been a couple of stories, these origin stories. <laughs> But yeah, I'm excited to wrap this story up and then discuss it with my group tonight. And then I've done a lot more reading on The Kingmaker. I'm about 53% of the way through and I'm really enjoying it. So it's the story of Lennox and Maxim. She is Native American, indigenous woman, and she feels really passionate in helping her community and correcting the injustices that have been put against them due to these greedy businessmen and politicians. And one of the greedy businessmen that really, really hurt her home community is Maxim's father. So she doesn't realize it's Maxim's father, but they have this very meaningful moment together and they never forget about each other. And then they like re-meet years later and like connect, da 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 da. Circumstances happen where like, Maxim's like, we can't stay together. This can't be a thing. I have to focus on my career. He is really focused on like climate change and climate activism, but he also wants to like monetize it. So he wants to have like windmills and things like that and like make the earth greener, but like benefit also from it because that's just kind of like in his blood as a businessman. And it's that story. So like I said, I'm about halfway through. So there was a, an original time jump which made sense. And now I've just hit another time jump and I'm kind of shook. I'm kind of shook by this next time jump. I don't know, I'm kind of taken aback by it. <laughs> I'm like, that's a lot of time we just jumped and we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, was, I don't know, I don't know. Like a lot could have happened in that time jump, but I haven't started yet, so we'll see. 
but so far I am really enjoying it. It's sitting at a four right now, really good, and it's a very compelling read. Like, I wanna pick it up, and when I'm reading it, I'm like flying through, but I have to focus on Paul right now as my priority, so. I will catch you later with when I'm doing something else. Probably when I wrap this up, because this video has probably been really long. Hi, it's a few days later. I had my book club meeting on Thursday and now it's Saturday. This vlog has been over an extended period of time because in the vlog I did my dress fitting and now it's been two weeks and I'm going back to finally pick up my dress. It should be completed, all the alterations done. And next Saturday, I'm literally getting married. I'm getting married next Saturday from the day I'm filming this right now. So, so by the time you're seeing this vlog, like I'll have been married for probably at least three weeks. Um, and I'll have posted other videos that I've pre-filmed earlier this week. Um, and I'm not gonna edit the vlog until later because vlogs take me longer to edit. But enough rambling, let me update you on the books. So I did finish this book. I don't remember if I told you my final thoughts. I don't think I did, but I really, really enjoyed this read. I would love to read it again in the future and I would definitely recommend it. It's a really interesting character study on our friend Paul and his journey. He was a little bit lost throughout the story and I feel like maybe at the end he was only just beginning to figure his stuff out. There were other characters that came into the story that I like wanted him to take inspiration from and emulate and aspire to be similar to as he's on his own journey. Um, in particular, Robin. So if you read this, I'm just as obsessed with Robin as everybody else. And yeah, like all my pink tabs are Robin tabs towards the end. <laughs> But yeah, it was a it was a really interesting read. I had a really fun time annotating it and exploring this kind of gender bending experience. It's very sexual, like Paul is exploring a lot of his, not really, I don't know if he's like exploring his sexuality, he's just a very sexual being. I had a great time and it was fun to talk about. And then speaking of book club, they surprised me with like a cute little book club bridal shower thing. They got me this cute little um, flower crown, which I wore in one of my videos that's probably posted, The Scavenger Hunt, which I can link up there if you wanna check it out if you haven't seen it already. And we had like cupcakes and champagne and it was really, really thoughtful and nice. They really didn't have to do that, but I was so appreciative and oh, it's really nice to meet new friends. <laughs> Cause as an adult, it can be hard, but anyway. And then finally, I literally just finished The Kingmaker by Kennedy Ryan. I ended up giving it four stars. Oh, for Paul's book, I think I gave it four stars, maybe like a 4.5. Um, I haven't logged it in my thing yet. But Kennedy Ryan's book, I gave four stars and it was a very romantic, fun time. There's like, there's just like so many tropes in it. I'd say there's like elements of like a bit of an age gap, a little bit of enemies to lovers, a little bit of like hidden identity and things like that. And there was a few, um, and there were a couple time jumps that surprised me, but they make a lot of sense and they definitely feel necessary. Um, though it's kind of sad because you're like, wow, what a lot of wasted time <laughs> for the couple. Um, and then it did in fact leave off on a big thriller like cliffhanger. So I'm intrigued to see where the story goes in the final book in this duet. Um, so hopefully I'll pick that up sooner than later. So that's it for this vlog. I hope you had a fun time hanging out with me. If you did, please feel free to leave it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already and you'd like to stick around, please subscribe. I would love to have you join the community I'm building here. And then I will catch you in the next video. Bye.